see, 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 I don't, I've never, I, I'm not one to have the whole, this ain't shit perspective on 100% because people aren't shit. You deal with both sides every day. I've dated both sides. People aren't shit. Women lean towards that men ain't shit, this ain't shit, because it gives them an excuse to not live up to their full potential as a woman. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Um, are you familiar with Shahrazad Ali? No. So Shahrazad Ali, in, in 1989, she wrote a book called Black Man's Guide to Understanding a Black Woman. She got a bunch of backlash. She was going on uh, talk shows. I think she was on the Donahue show, which was pretty much like the Oprah Winfrey show at that time. And one of the audience members stood up and was like, I'm a Yoruba priestess and what you're doing is evil and you're um, sowing discourse in our community. She was talking to Shahrazad Ali. Do you know who that lady was? It was uh, Yala Van Sant. <laughs> it was Yala Van Sant. So, like, to go from that to now talking about black women are out of order, there has been a shift because Sherazad was saying that in 1989, right? So, the book was about some of the reasons why um, black women are out of order. Now, when you read the book, at least from a male perspective, she could have wrote that yesterday. <laughs> She could have wrote that two weeks ago. Like, it is that relevant. She's talking about the over-sexualization of Black women, how they do it to themselves. She's talking about um, how they've been essentially raised to inherently disrespect the Black man and how we as Black people have only investigated, no, interrogated Black men, but we haven't actually ever interrogated Black women outside of their physical appearance. So why do you think it is so hard to critique black women? It was hard in 1989. It's definitely harder now. Why do you think that is? Um, I feel it's harder because black women have had to be the ones who took on the role of being the head of the black family in more situations than not. Uh, like back in the day, the man was the head, but somewhere along the line that shift happened. And not just because of the fact that black men don't want to be part of families, because they've been like, I believe that black families as a whole have been generationally, general, generationally broken apart, whether it be by system, institution, institutionalization, prisons, breaking down, and even sometimes, which is hard to admit, by, by us women, we have taken their power and put it all to ourselves. Sometimes because we had to, and once you've had to do that, all you know is to teach your other children, mainly your women, to make sure you're prepared to be the head, because there may not be a head in the traditional sense of being a man. So we've had to own that power and become the head, and in that sense, don't nobody tell Big Mama no. You know, you, you don't get the, when, when what Mama say it goes. You know, you ask your daddy, he, what would your Mama say? Those type of situations. So whether it be overt or underhanded, we've had, there's been a shift in the power of the family. Because in biblical sense, the man is the head. But again, our families have been torn down, broken apart for so many years where we've had to create a new sense of who's the head. And you don't wanna, you don't wanna break your mama down. She's, you, she's seen enough. From my own personal perspective, I was raised by a single mother, working multiple jobs to take care of me, my brothers, and whoever else she could take in, part of my family and friends. So I'm not trying to burden that woman with any additional problems. And anybody coming to her, men mainly, you wanna date my mama, you gotta go through me and my brothers. And that's intimidating and it can be a bit much. But again, who's going against the woman that's 
holding the family down. Who's trying to do that? Whether it's fair or not, no. But it's where we are. Mm. So, you know, for me, I always start the conversation with white supremacy as far as the breakdown of the black family. And then after that, I go to the black man. These are the ways that we assisted white supremacy to break down the black family. And I think we're hyper aware of that as a society. So my question is, what are the ways women are willing to own as to how women assisted white supremacy to break down the black family? It's not an easy question. It's not an easy question because women are often on the front lines of trying to protect the black man. We're the ones that are going. I guess, you know, you know, thinking along those lines. Here we go. So while we're the ones that are on the front lines, a lot of times we throw that in their faces. Um, we we know that they have had a disadvantage. And sometimes we don't respect or recognize it enough. Uh, while, again, I guess playing devil's advocate, a lot of men rest on that. Like, oh man, you know, the man hold me down and the man won't let me do this and that. So, as a woman, you take up that, that pile of shit and you make sugar with it. Like, you have to understand, like, oh, okay, even if it's playing on the man's sympathies and, or, or them playing on yours and be like, okay, so they have it harder, so let me... Let me own it. Let me help them with this. Or women that have had to choose between the black man and their children. They're going to choose their children every time. So. Those YT people (laughs) have made it to a point where it's easier for the black woman to placate into their ways and methods rather than stand boldly beside the black man and just be like, I'm gonna stand beside you no matter what. Instead of having that unconditional, there's conditions on it. Which, it, damn, thinking about it, that shit sucks. But it's where we are. Like, It's like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, sometimes as a woman. Do you want to support this man, stick beside him no matter what? Or be like, man, fuck him. I got my children. I got my own stuff to do. I'm bearing the weight on my own. I can do better by myself, those type of things. So, In, in a lot of the conversations I've had with women, there, there tends to be a, hmm, a reflex to almost excuse women. So it's like, yeah, this thing she did was kind of fucked up. But da, 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 da. her dad wasn't there, this and that. But black men don't get that same grace oftentimes. It usually that conversation ends with niggas ain't shit. Period, point blank, period. See, so, see, I don't I've never I, I'm not one to have the whole niggas ain't shit. Perspective 100 percent, because people aren't shit. You deal with both sides every day. I've dated both sides. People aren't shit. It's easier to go towards the gender because rather than you having to accept and deal with the fact that sometimes you're the problem, you can just put it on that blanket statement and it absolves you. Everybody's going to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's 100% agree. you know, they ain't no good. No, people aren't shit. And but sometimes we as women are the problem. I will 100% admit sometimes it's us because Again, I was raised to be independent. And in that independence, I found that I wasn't allowing another person, whether it be a man or a woman, to love me or do for me like they wanted to or they were raised to or they expected to in those roles or whatever. Because to me, I can do it all by myself. I don't need nobody. I got me that type of situation. But when you're doing those things and when you're claiming you got it all, you can do it all, you're perfect, you don't have any problems. You're lying to yourself, first of all. And you're shutting out people that can truly be there for you in ways that you can't be there for yourself. Think, do things that you can't do for yourself. But you're so stuck on, I'm independent, I'm strong, I got it all, I have to do it all. You miss it. 
And I, I think truly, and honestly, a lot of times now, women lean towards that men ain't shit, niggas ain't shit, because it gives them an excuse to not live up to their full potential as a woman, but be excused when a man can't fit into the box that they want him to. So you cannot do everything you're supposed to. You can be problematic. You can have your shit with you. But the minute this man steps out of line as a result of you not having your shit together, not being able to give them what they need in that reciprocal relationship, oh, they ain't shit. I knew you was going to do this. No, you set them up to do it. You, you created a space where it became okay for them to fail you because you almost expected it. You almost made it happen yourself. Not always, but that's often what happens. It's like confirmation bias. Got you. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, it's an interesting question. I want you to give it some thought because then there's a follow-up question. Okay. Do you think of yourself as a woman who happens to be black or as a black person who happens to be a woman? A black person who is a woman. Break that down. Before I am anything else, before I am breasts and a vagina, nails, makeup, before I'm any of that, when someone sees me, they're gonna see a black person. My skin color comes before anything else. I could, I could hide being a woman. I can't hide being black. And throughout my 32 years of life, I've had a lot of struggles with being a dark skinned person and loving myself. And in doing so, I had to truly take the time to do some self work, self development and introspection to learn, do I love me? And if I do, what do I love most about me? And I love that I come from a background so rich in culture and customs and creativity. Like I was born with a beat. That, 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 those kind of things to me mean more the, the coarseness of my hair, the, the fullness of my lips, the way my hips are rounding off, all of that to me. And, and also just, just looking at myself being like, damn, chocolate ain't never looked so good as it did. <laughs> when it's all like, like, you know, that, that to me is the same feeling I get when I walk outside on a sunny day and I look at the way the skin is glistening off of me and it's kind of warming my body, it doesn't hurt. I just feel like I'm alive again. That's, I love being black. Like you could take being a woman, I, I'd be cool being a dude. And I, again, I told you, I'm, I'm a woman, not a lady. I wear makeup and nails cause I'm a girly, but again, I would love to be a dude. <laughs> It'd be cool, I don't care, woman or man, doesn't matter. But you asked me a million times, I would never want to be any other race but black. And that's powerful. So part of the reason that um, question is so important is because some of the criticism that black men have towards black women has a lot to do with uh, feminism and how feminism, some people would say feminism was introduced to us to sow discord. Um, so the question is, has feminism helped or hurt the black community? Uh, I would say, I would think hurt because when you look at Feminism, it goes back to that having to play a role, being subservient, you fitting into a category. But if you look at tribes around the world, especially in Africa, 
doesn't exist. Or it's like reverse, where women are the hunters, the gatherers, men are the ones to take care of home. It's like that feminine aspect has made us have to fit in a space where biologically, genetically, it's not what we want to be. Like women, African, as me as an African-American woman and ones I know, we don't want to just sit at home and take care of children. It's part of who we are, but it's a part. Like I have best friends who are bosses who have multiple businesses, but also have children they're raising and a husband that they're making sure gets dinner at night. Not because they have to, but it's because they work together as a unit. So I think feminism and the whole femininity idea has hurt us because it oh, makes no, the femininity. Oh, so you're saying femininity, not feminism. Feminism is the movement that, you know, equal pay oh, and all that stuff. Oh, God. Femin yeah, no, so keep going oh. with femi uh, femininity and then yeah. we'll get to feminism. Okay, well, yeah, femininity. Feminism is a whole other thing. I don't even know if I f fuck with feminism sometimes. <laughs> but the femininity of it all has kind of broken us out of the together aspects, working together. But if we're getting into feminism, again, I don't, I'm all about women's empowerment, but sometimes feminism tries to separate more than it does try to empower a woman. It's more about women should, women should, women should, despite of men, rather than it should be respect women as people who can do more than just those take care of some babies, and you know, cook dinner and make their hair look pretty. It's about giving them that empowerment and that feeling of you're more than just someone who takes care of home. But you get those extreme women who go on and on about it and it just becomes something that's ugly to me. So I think feminism definitely has hurt us because again, you latch on to the wrong shit and it all becomes convoluted and twisted to fit whatever narrative you're trying to push rather than what it's truly about. Because I'm all about, I'm pro-women. Let us have our shine, we can do anything. But again, hold up, because I got nails in this jar of pickles might be a little too tight, so I'm gonna need a man to come open it. <laughs> like, you don't have to be, I am woman, hear me roar, I can do it all, beat on your chest. Because again, you're still a woman.